All right, let's let's get it up in the air now. Show me a high five iron. High. A high five iron. How are you gonna hit it? I think I'm gonna try to hit more down on it. Well, down is good. Open. Down is good. What 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 we're looking for here? You must whenever you start talking about hitting the ball higher or lower, we're automatically out of the realm of the horizontal hinge, unless you just drop back to a lower a lost club. Because a horizontal hinge can only hit the ball one height. Right. What they used to say about Hogan, Hogan would be hitting five irons or six irons or whatever, and they'd say, well, he's boring the same hole in the sky. That's because the club face was not doing any laying back at all. It was simply closing, and so with any one shot, you've just got one hole in the sky. You've got one loft, and that's it. If you want to hit a higher than that, you either got to go A, change it to a higher numbered club, uh, or B, throw the club. Throw the club under the ball, lay back the club face. And if you've done that, you're no longer horizontally hinging. Right. So what it says is that if you want to affect the flight of the ball up or down, you must use angled hinging. So if I've asked you to hit the ball higher, first thing that pops in your mind, angled hinging. Got to use angled right. hinging. Now, we know that with angled hinging, the further the ball, the club gets along in its path through impact, the more it's laying back, right? right. So to hit the ball higher, would we want to hit the ball further back or further forward? forward. Further forward. So automatically, we're going to have to have the ball further forward. Now, interestingly, there's only one spot that you can play that ball and have uh, and, and have it be perfect for that particular club in terms of the release motion being exactly right and producing a perfect impact. Other than that, if you play the ball forward at that point or back at that perfect point, that perfect straightaway, you've got to redirect your thrust in a certain way. That's why it might take you a couple of times to do this. You'll, uh, you literally redirect the thrust. Remember that delivery path we talked about? Instead of, instead of being one point, you're directing it at another point. For now, let's just direct it at the ball. And even if the ball goes further, your thrust will actually be being directed at a different point. So, with the ball further forward then, we're going to lay the club face back using angled hinging. And that ought to be about the only two adjustments you need to produce a higher ball flight. Keep everything up. Then don't try to throw it up or flip it under. Don't throw it hinging, at least not right at this time. And there is definitely your higher ball flight, but, it, but we got a fade out of it. Why? The, the, the blade was open. Yeah, just square that blade. Remember, angled hinging is going to tend to produce a left to right shot anyway. And if you had that blade open, which is fine, and exactly where it ought to be for horizontal hinging. But we're not horizontal hinging. So you always want to have the blade slightly open at impact fix for horizontal hinging because the blade's going to be closing. With angled hinging, you always want to have it slightly closed at impact fix because it's going to be laid back at impact fix. You also have to need to offset that built-in uncentered fade action. So the, the, the difficulty with that shot, the only wonderful swing is you had to put it in the And that's not compatible with angled hinging. So close, shut that blade down. Shut it down, even more. Right, even though you're trying to hit the ball higher, the blade's still going to be closed. Right. And now make your normal, good old downswing. Try again. Try again, right there. That line's fine. See, part of this is, like I said, the thrust is, is because the ball's up, the thrust has to be redirected in another place. And that was where your old thrust was. Better. Wasn't that nice? Automatically. See the extra height on that ball? So if you've got that flag stuck up on some tier of a green up in here, and you gotta send that you gotta bring it in high onto that. That's the shot you're gonna use. Well, they've got it tucked behind a flag and you have to in that way. Without much green behind to work with. This is the way you're gonna have to do it. Wonderful. See that one he even had the down. See, even with this tremendous downward move that you made up another 20 yards yes. because of the fact that you used angled hinging with a properly set club face and that allowed you into the ball a little more forward so you get maximum layback. You really got to find out. All right, so what you said is that you really got to find out where the thrust is going. Yep. Exactly. And how you know how you do that? Experiment. It's the only way. Nobody can do it for you. Watch that club face. Could you see how it was open? Yeah. Yeah, because that's the normal thing for procedures. See how that would come down?
down so soft. So these guys are coming in there with, you know, with three irons and they're coming in like bullets, you know, and they're hitting by the flags and running off the back of the green. Here comes old Colin. When it comes down like a butterfly with sore feet. <laughs> Yep, that's a big lesson there, isn't it? We hadn't put, I'm glad we did this because I hadn't pointed that out. Yep, right. Wow, Dad, look at that. Can you believe? <laughs> was that cool? <laughs> oh, man, that was just fantastic. Uh, uh, fish and swimming lessons, I love it. <laughs>